You always know when I start a, a video with the words, well, well, you know a vindication is coming. We were attacked, the Kimber Touch site was attacked for stating that uh, Silver was anti-COVID and calling it an anti-COVID protocol, but re every bit of research proves me right. And some recent research has come out where they were spraying surgical masks and surfaces with silver nanoparticles and finding out that they were testing it against COVID-19 specifically because that's exactly what Fauci was whining about uh, most of the time was, well, you got to prove it, you know, that it doesn't, uh, uh, it, that it's effective against COVID-19, even though we've proven that the silver attacks the same exact identical spike protein as found in HIV, as found in sometimes in some of the herpes and some of the hepatitis. Uh, it's uh, the same spike protein. So if, if you have a compound that attacks the same s spike protein as found in SARS, that is found in COVID, then you should take whatever treated SARS and treat COVID with it. Why? Because it's a state of emergency. Because you're so worried about us dying. Because it's so important to tr collapse the economy over, over a virus that was manufactured. It's been predicted. It's been prophesized that, you know, pestilence was coming and disease was coming. And that one day those behind this will be paying a huge and terrible price. And uh, they're in denial about what's to come. They think they can control the world uh, with their plans. And, you know, maybe they can. But I think there's something in store for these people that they haven't bargained for. Like people on the inside uh, turning on them. That's going to be their biggest and their weakest link. But studies came out against COVID-19 specifically. Silver worked to inactivate the virus We're like we didn't see that coming. And we made a video a long time ago, right in the early days of this uh, pandemic, pandemic, And we said, spray your masks with silver and spray your air filters with silver. If you have a restaurant, a bus, an airline, spray your air filters with silver silver you're going to reduce the act active viral particles immensely you're going to add a level of protection that wasn't there and those people who refuse to wear a mask aren't going to be as big a threat and remember masks don't protect me from you masks protect you from me and still uh, nobody's leading the nation on the fact that hand contact is your primary mode of transmission of almost all respiratory diseases. The droplet nuclei, they're heavy. They don't last in the air for a long time. They fall to the ground. Listen, and when they're moist, they stick. They adhere to whatever they touch. And when the cruise ship was quarantined for three weeks, they went in and tested the contact surfaces and they still found active viruses on the contact surfaces. Viable and very, very um, considerable uh, numbers of viral particles on the contact surfaces. So everything you touch with your bare hands should be considered contaminated. And if you're wearing a mask, it does keep you from touching your face. Most people remove their masks by grabbing their masks. Even medical people do that. And there's very little education going on because it's not a pandemic, it's a pandemic. So we were vindicated by the latest research, which we will provide you links to, that shows that silver, and sometimes silver and copper together, um, are even stronger antiviral. And they're talking about copper zero. And so uh, the copper one, I can't make false claims. I don't know if it works. I know when you ingest copper one, at least in the cuprous nicotinic acid form, it, it goes into the bloodstream. 
uh, and into the mitochondria and is used, you know, at the very internal portions of the cell. It's absorbed into the very internal portions of macrophages. I do believe it makes the macrophages more active. I do not think that it binds to viral particles that are external because the copper one's greatest claim to fame is internal, internal to the cell, internal to the macrophage. And so this stuff automatically goes into the cell. And so if you have viral particles in the bloodstream, I don't see how they would attach uh, readily. But in theory, they should because they carry with it a negative ion. That copper ion is uh, called plus one because it's lost an electron. So to me, the more electrons you have, the more you're able to neutralize the spike protein, which is a positive charge. So copper zero and cuprous oxide may be even more antiviral than, than theory says cuprous nicotinic acid should be. The copper, the copper niacin. Also, um, I want to thank a couple people that uh, have helped me out the last couple days. Um, your help has meant the world to me. When you, when you throw me a link, it's, it's, it's important because people do uh, uh, die from this disease. But also, there's animals all around us that are just falling left and right. And it's like we're seeing a rapid expansion of the extinction, and the weather patterns aren't helping. The incredible ultraviolet isn't helping. The weather extremes going from 90 degrees one day to freezing the next, it's not helping. And so uh, basically uh, awareness is what drives us to be prepared and to stockpile and to grow our own uh, produce and to form relationships and alliances and to better prepare for what lays ahead. Um, those people who were not prepared uh, paid a d dear price uh, during the COVID uh, lockdowns, and I call them lockdowns because that's what they were. Um, you know, these people were were left without toilet paper. They were left without supplies, and a lot of these people um, were going to the store and not finding canned goods on the shelves. They were they weren't unable to stockpile and they squeak through so you tell me what's going to happen next time there's a freak out pandemic um, you know this thing's going to come and go in waves when people talk about mutations I just want to add this is a biological fact it's public record that mutations in a living organism generally do not help the living organism so if a virus mutates, it doesn't mutate usually into something more virulent and, and stronger and more deadly. It usually mutates into something less dangerous because you're interfering and you're breaking that viral pattern in the DNA that made it dangerous in the first place. So the more mutations an organism goes through, the weaker and more febile it becomes. Many people speculate that all these different mutations are actually just different strains, different engineered strains. And I have no proof of that, but uh, it sounds absolutely logical when you find out that the original CV19 um, came from a lab and has inserted proteins that uh, you don't find normally on a coronavirus. So um, there's a paper trail, not just from Harvard to Wuhan, but from Dr. Fauci's NIH itself. And the last thing I want to say is on the Remsdidavir, Remsdizavir, Remsidavir, Remsomethingavir. Um, I just want to say there's so much stink around that. Um, it's very hard for me to jump on board. If I thought it would help, if I thought it was a great idea, I would be one of the first people jumping up and making a video about it. There are people who claim that the president never had this disease and it was all fabricated and made up um, to, to sell remdesivir, um, remdesivir, 
but the bottom line is is there's a great video about what has happened with that drug um, and the actual manufacturers the relationship they have with dr fauci and his staff the money they have paid them for for the development of something that you and i paid for we should be getting royalties not them and so um there's there's a, a lot of really troubling facts regarding this um, there's a peer review study out of china that was posted in the lancet that says there was no statistical relevance to survival times and survival statistics with this um, antiviral and i can tell you right now the biggest weakness of this antiviral is that you can't take it orally it's only administered iv and when what that means you got to be pretty sick before you get it so you go in the hospital and you're already pretty sick that flies in the face of everything that's ever been found out about anything anything that is antiviral the longer you wait that the harder it is to get rid of your virus and that that goes for cancer that goes for any almost any infection the more advanced your infection whether it's bacteria whether it's fungal whether what it doesn't matter the longer you wait the less effective the treatments are going to be that is a concrete fact so the only way you're getting remzitivir is if you're really sick and if you're really sick it's almost too late to get remzitivir which is why they have found no statistical relevance to survivability and there um there's so many things concerning regarding what's going on with this drug and the the uh, company that um is manufacturing it, um, it it bothers me because the taxpayers developed it it was NIH who developed it it was our money who funded that research and it started out as an anti Ebola medication but it, once again you know once you're vomiting and you're in hemorrhaging from Ebola getting an antiviral is going to be minimally effective uh, you know, it's it's like getting chemotherapy for cancer. It's a desperate move. So until next time, uh, I'll post the link to the remdesivir uh, study uh, to the to the actual video that that shows just how deplorable the that situation is, how concerning it is. Um, you know, and again, people are gonna politicize it. You know, they're going to take it as a, a knock on their candidate, their guy, their vote. But the bottom line is, this isn't a knock on any one candidate. It's a knock on a financial situation that had conflicts of interest that have existed since the beginning of our government and has just become even more pronounced since we they're allowed to have super PACs now and receive millions of dollars from these influential people.